Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I'm going to show you the two different blades, Macintosh and Miller, and how to intubate the patient with these blades. First, the way we're going to position the patient, as you see here, if you use utilizing a stretcher, we're going to position auditory meatus with the sternal notch or ear hole with the sternum. And if you're using an EMS stretcher, you could just elevate the back of it and then move the patient up so that the ear hole is aligned uh, to the chest, right, to the sternum. You don't have to put the padding in this case if you're utilizing the stretcher. Now, what's the easiest way to remember the difference between Mac blade and Miller blade? So if you see, I wrote on the board, Macintosh has a C in it, so that's a curvature of the blade. So Mac blade is a curved blade, and hence why uh, you see a C, it's curved, this way you remember it. In Miller, uh, uh, there's an L, which is long, right? So easy way to remember Miller and Macintosh. And uh, both inventors um, were named Robert. So Robert Macintosh and Miller, Miller, Robert Miller, and they were the creators of these two blades. So first I'm going to show you how to intubate this patient with uh, a Macintosh blade. So after we position the patient properly and we have aligned the auditory meters with the sternal notch, I also want to uh, adjust my tube. I usually will keep it in a wrapper. Uh, I will take out for the demonstration purposes. Uh, but, but you want it to be straight to the cuff. So this is all straight and only the cuff will be bent about 30 to 40 degrees, right? And I will keep it here. But uh, in the actual setting, you want to keep it in the wrapper to avoid uh, patients getting WAP or ventilator acquired pneumonia. Now, when you're in this position, the first thing you want to do is open the mouth. And the way you're going to open the mouth is a cross uh, finger technique or a scissors technique. So you take your middle finger and you put it at the top incisors. And then you take your thumb and you open the mouth. Now, the, the possibility that if the patient has higher uh, or intact mental status and your drugs are not on board for your induction, patient can bite you, right? So an alternate technique is find the lip and open the mouth using this technique. So both techniques will facilitate opening of the mouth. Uh, next thing, what you're gonna do is you wanna insert the blade. Now, if you insert the blade straight down, sometimes the patient has big chest and this handle uh, may get in the way of you doing this. So uh, always you want to come in from the side. And the next important thing, the way you're holding the blade, right? We always have the blade in my left hand, never the right hand. And what I do is I am lower down uh, here, and this is not a handle, this is a battery holder, right? So remember, this is not a handle, a battery holder. So grip it low, thumbs up, and chicken wing in. So you don't want to stick your uh, um, shoulder uh, and your elbow out. You want to have your shoulder and your elbow in, chicken wing in, and your motion is going to be like the Rockham Sockham robots uh, uh, that you've seen uh, perhaps uh, the toys that fight with each other, and your motion is going to be the, as follows. So thumbs up, right? Chicken wing in, uh, Rockham Sockham robots giving me the OK sign, right? So cross finger technique, and you're going to come from the side of the mouth. Now you're going to swip the tongue from right to left. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to jam the blade all the way in. This is how you damage heart and soft tissues of the patient. And then additionally, if you do this, you will inadvertently uh, think esophagus is the tracheal inlet. So the way you're going to do it, this is open your mouth with the cross finger technique, scissor the technique, come in from the side, and then I'm going to sweep the tongue, but I'm doing this in my increments. And what I'm trying to do is my first step is I'm inching in on the tongue, and what I want to do is I want to see the sliver of the epiglottis. When I see the sliver of epiglottis, I'm going to press down here. Now, this is not a solex maneuver. Solex maneuver is where you occlude the, um, the esophagus. All I'm doing is I'm pressing here. It's called external laryngeal manipulation. And what I'm doing is I'm going to press down, right, uh, where on the tracheal cartilage so that my uh, tip of the epiglottis drops down. So I came here push down and now I can see my vallecula very prominently. And what I do is I want to sit my blade into the vallecula. This space in the vallecula, you want to engage all the way, all the way down. The reason why is that you're going to engage the high epiglottic ligament and you want to engage it all the way at the tip of the vallecula. And once you're engaged in this location, you're going to lift up and, and, and away from you, right? And now you see an excellent view of the vocal cords. Now I have my tube already positioned here with a 30 to 40 degree bend. Never come in from the front, it will obstruct your view. You always come in from the side. And then at the final position, I'm going to rotate and place my tube into the patient. So this is the view that you wanted to get. 
once I'm in this location, I'm first noting depth. So ideally you wanna be about 20 uh, at, the, at the teeth, right? So I could push this down slightly and then I anchor, right? I, I make sure my thumb is anchored to the maxilla. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to inflate my uh, cuff and I always keep this anchored in case that someone pulls this too aggressively, uh, my tube does not get dislodged. And you just noticed I went through a lot of steps. I had to position the head, position the patient, find my landmarks, right? And I don't want my tube to be dislodged. That's why I always anchor uh, within the tracheal tube. And I never let go until my tube is secured. And now let me move over to this mannequin cutout and just show you all the steps that I showed you on the mannequin. So thumbs up, lower on the handle, chicken wing in. And what you're going to do is uh, on this mannequin, this is your uh, tracheal inlet and this is the US, this is your esophagus. Once you come in from the right, you're gonna sweep towards the left. And what you're gonna do is you wanna slowly inch until you see the sliver of the, what, epiglottis. Then you're gonna press on a thyroid cartilage. And what this will do, this will drop your epiglottis down, right? Once it's down, I'm going to seat the tip of my blade into the vollecula and the high hyoepiglottic ligament space. Once I do this, I can now go ahead and lift up and I see excellent view of the vocal cords. So step uh, of my assessment was finding the epiglottis first, right? Pushing down on the uh, thyroid cartilage so I can sit my blade into the vollecula and then lifting up and forward to see uh, the glottic uh, inlet, right? Or um, laryngeal inlet so that I can introduce my tube. And this is how you're going to use the Macintosh blade. Now, let me show you how you're going to employ a middle bl blade for this patient. So let me deflate my tube. So the positioning will remain the same. Patient is going to remain in uh, head position with auditory meters aligned to the sternal notch. I'm also going to adjust my tube so that it's straight to cuff, straight to cuff with a 30 to 40 degree angle, right? And then I'm going to connect my syringe here. And this will be in the wrapper at the patient's bedside. Now, the way this blade works is slightly different. And I'm gonna show you how. So step one, right? Scissor technique to open the mouth. Then come in from the side. And what I'm doing is, again, I'm inching on the tongue. And what I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find, yes, you guessed it right. I wanna see the epiglottis. I see the sliver of epiglottis. I press down, right, so that um, I see, right, the vollecula. I'm going to raise my mannequin here, or um, the head up, so that I see the excellent view of the vocal cords. I'm then going to go ahead and introduce my endotracheal tube from the side, coming in like so, with securing the same way. Now, let me show you how this looks on this mannequin. So, okay. Coming in from the side, you inch until you see the sliver of epiglottis, push down so that the epiglottis drops down. And inst instead of inserting into the vollecula, you're gonna grab the epiglottis and lift this up. So this is the view that you want going to see, right? This is the view that you are trying to obtain when you're trying to intubate the patient. Now, uh, there was a study uh, that was looking at which uh, one to employ, right? So it's a false uh, misconception that if you have a pediatric patient, you must use a Miller, or if you have a trauma patient, you must use a Miller. Actually, they did a study for infants and pediatrics under two years old, and they found no difference in these two blades before the belief was because the pediatrics uh, and infant population has a floppy uh, U-shaped ep uh, epiglottis. It was easier to employ this. Uh, blade, but what they uncovered is that there was no difference in obtaining a good view with these blades. So it's based on um, essentially operator preference, whoever is um, uh, intubating the patient and your proficiency level with these uh, blades. So utilize the one you're most proficient in and practice with both of them so that you're comfortable using both of these in the field. So here would be the proper way to place the thumbs to polar. So the mouthpiece aperture is facing towards the feet, all right? I'm going to first put the tube in the V wedge, then I'm going to seat my blade block, making sure my teeth are not in the way. I'm going to slide my clamp, remove it because I no longer need it, and then secure it. 
then I'm going to go ahead and secure my roller clamp here. And this would be the proper way of using this. Now, if any instructor or anyone tells you the way to place this device is like so, so that you could read the Thomas label legibly uh, and put this under their head. and secure it like so, what you gotta be aware is that uh, doing this way is incorrect and you're not following manufacturer's guidelines. So you shouldn't be able to read Thomas uh, legibly. What you should be doing is following manufacturer's guidelines, making sure the mouthpiece aperture is facing towards the feet.